We praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We lift up your name. We bless you. Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Come on in. Invite your friends. We bless the Lord, all my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Come on. This is God's day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not allowing my circumstances to take this day. God has made this day. And everything that God has made, it is good. Come on, let's rejoice. Hallelujah, Jesus. In spite of what's going on, we can declare today that God is good. He sits high and he looks low. God is still providing. God is still doing miracles. God is still doing performing signs and wonders in our midst. The fact that you're online with me right now is a sign that God is still at work. Come on, give God praise right where you are. Come on, right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We're shut in, but we're not shut out. We are so grateful for your presence. We are so grateful for your word. We are so grateful for your strength, your hope, your peace, your righteousness. We thank you, Lord. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Come on, let's give Facebook a heart attack right now. Just begin to hit those hearts. Amen. Begin to share. We welcome you to this intercessory hour. Pastor Max, small group. Amen. We are so grateful for you to join me live here in North Carolina. Amen. As, as your special guest, amen. God is good. Come on. I'm so happy to be uh, with you this morning, right where you are. God is good. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Shout out to all my East Friendship family, all of you who are joining across the nation, across the world. God is good. Jesus is Lord. He is good and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. We're going to come in. We're going to have some impartation, some prayer. We're going to make some declarations. Amen. And we're going to encourage your hearts on today. I, well, the enemy is trying to mess with the technology and everything else. But I believe what we have is what God wants right now. Amen. Amen. So right now, just begin to bring up a song in your heart, in your spirit. Begin to stir something up right now with a thank you, Jesus. Maybe we need to turn everything on, off, turn everything off and begin to tune in with God. We've been trying to entertain ourselves and we've been trying to try to encourage ourselves with all types of sound, even spiritual sound. But there is a sound even in silence. There's a sound even in stillness. So let us just go before the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Embrace stillness. Embrace this time. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. Come on in. Come on in as you shared. Begin to share. Begin to share. Somebody needs to hear this word. I have something for you. And, and I believe now I'm right where God wants me to be. That's why we're switching it up. I caught up with the Lord. Amen. Something I was uh, just getting changed. Just got in uh, from out there working. And now I'm, I'm here to impart and encourage. And I'm stirred up. I'm going to try not to uh, blow the roof off. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I'm ready to impart into and encourage. So make sure you share, share that, press that share button right now in the name of Jesus so we can reach persons and bless them in this time. Welcome all the saints in quarantine. Amen. God is good. Listen, I'm not going to be before you long, but I feel like imparting this to you. And we're going to pray in the name of Jesus. And I pray even while I'm imparting, I pray that you pray my strength and that the Lord will provide this word with clarity and power and impact in, in the name of Jesus. Um, we're in quarantine. We're, we are um, in, in, in shutdown. We've been locked in our, in our homes and shutting in our homes. And sometimes we are able to go out and do some things, but our lives have been very limited and restricted. Restricted. Amen. And I and I was just pondering on the word of God. And one of the things I'm reminded is that quarantine and uh, times of isolation is not new to the people of God. I pray that you just pray as I impart and pour. Um, one of the things I'm reminded, it's in John chapter 20. And then I also rem I'm reminded of Acts chapter 1 and 2. Um, chapters 1 and chapters 2, we see that Jesus comes and the, the disciples, they are dealing with uh, an, an external threat. They are in isolation. They are in quarantine as well. They have lost their leader. There's, there's a threat on their lives for all the followers of Jesus Christ, all the followers of the way. Of the, way. Um, the government uh, at that time has now deemed uh, the following of Jesus, the movement of the kingdom, uh, non-essential. They have now crucified the leader. They are now disbanding all the gathering, gatherings and they are coming after. Uh, the people of the way. They are being persecuted. So now they find themselves with uh, uh, the threats um, for on um, their lives and they are in quarantine. They're in isolation. They are locked in and shut in. And it's during this time that Jesus, he comes in and he, he comes into the room. He comes through the door and he comes in and he's, he, he imparts to them. He says, peace, uh, be still peace be unto you. And right now I release the peace of God. I release the shalom of God with all that you're receiving through your eye gates and your ear gates. And you're seeing things on text messages and you're seeing things and hearing things and briefings and news and all types of things that's happening. You're getting constant updates about the virus and we don't have to keep speaking the name of that virus. We're going to speak the name of the Lord. We're hearing so much. We're receiving updates updates, but we need to hear a sound from heaven. And here's the first sound, peace be unto you. I need somebody to just put shalom, 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 shalom in the name of Jesus. Shalom. We release shalom over this digital space release. Shalom, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to you right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know about your area, but in my area, we I've been receiving updates um, as a law enforcement officer, and I found out that our since we have been shut in, that the domestic violence rate has increased by 20 or 30 percent. So we're getting all types of calls of domestic violence in certain areas where uh, men and women are being abused and and uh, and even the uh, murder rate has gone up. It, that's tied and connected to domestic violence. So right now we release peace upon the minds of men and women across the world in the name of Jesus, the shalom of God. We come against strife right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. If you want to tag this impartation or this devotional, um, we can tag it the spirit in your shut in, the spirit in your shut in, the spirit in your shut in. And right now release a spirit of peace right now in the name of Jesus between siblings, between parent and child, between spouses, even the internal war that's going on within you right now, trying to figure things out, trying to bear the burden of a household. And that was my first message. Even Jesus had to bear the burden, try to encourage the disciples and, and, and inform them why he had to go to Jerusalem to die. And sometimes we're trying to encourage, we're trying to budget, we're trying to manage a home 
during crisis and it gets hard sometimes when you're the caregiver, when you're the leader, and when you're just uh, in the situation, it gets difficult right sometimes. And we speak shalom unto you right now for all the decision makers of every house, every situation. You might be a decision maker over different homes, your house, your mama's house, somebody else's house, really shalom to you right now. Even Jesus had to deal with the burden, dealing with the crisis, um, dealing with his disciples. He had to bear the burden and encourage them, but then he had to bear the burden in Gethsemane. So I release strength and peace to those who have to uh, make decisions. But the disciples find themselves in quarantine, John chapter 20, and Jesus comes and he speaks peace be unto them. But the next thing after he gives peace, he then imparts power. Somebody say power, 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 the power of the Holy Ghost. He, he's there in quarantine, they're shut down. They've been discouraged because there's an external threat outside of their homes, outside of where they are. Um, there's an th external threat. And so they find themselves shut in. But God comes and he comes into their space. And I pray that you will allow the spirit of God to come into your space and impart peace to you, but also impart power. D the text says in John chapter 20, it says that Jesus Breathe. Jesus breathe upon the disciples. Hallelujah. I'm believing that, hallelujah, Jesus, that God is going to breathe on the believer like never before. God, in the name of Jesus, breathe upon your people in the name of Jesus. Yes, fresh wind and fresh fire is coming to the church, but is coming to your address. We are the church. Breath, fresh wind, fresh fire. Some of us, we know we've been camping and you can make fire. Hallelujah. You turn some sticks and you got some rocks and you're turning it and you're creating friction and fire. But at the same time, you have to do what? Breathe on it. There's fresh wind, that wind and that fire coming together. God is bringing fresh wind and fresh fire as he breathes upon you. God had to keep, had to, he said in Psalm 23, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. Come on. He make us us. He, he, God has allowed all of this to happen. All things work together for our good. And I believe that even the, the, our lack of gathering uh, and having the assembly, the physical assembly of the church, God is allowing us to come back to the basis and to be breathed upon for the next shift. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm, I'm trying to contain myself right now, but God is is breathing upon us and he's given us fresh wind and fresh fire. He came into the quarantine of the disciples. He came into the shutting. The spirit came. Jesus came in the spirit and he breathed upon them. And he said this, receive now the Holy Spirit. Mm. He breathed upon them the Holy Spirit. God is breathing upon marriages. He is breathing upon children. He is breathing upon men. He is breathing upon women. Fresh wind, fresh fire, fresh pneuma, fresh ruah, fresh inspiration, fresh revelation, a fresh word from God, a new wine, fresh wine, fresh fire, fresh wind is coming to the church and Revival ought to start at the home with the current, with the previous model of the church, the previous paradigm of the church. We've been having revivals in accordance to our standard. But when there's a true revival of God, it will visit your house. It will come to your address. There will be revival and the stirring in every member of your family. There will be fasting amongst family members. There will be conversion amongst 
amongst family members where persons are coming out of the darkness into his marvelous light. This quarantine is a time for God to resuscitate his bride. Oh, the sun is coming in and I'm feeling the glory of God. The power God is resuscitating us. He's breathing upon his bride. The second incarnation, the church, the body of Christ. He's breathing upon us because he wants us to go to the next level, go deeper into another dimension. Hallelujah, God. In my prayer time all this week and last week, God has been putting a word in me about being being planted by the rivers of water. He's breathing upon us that we might be rooted, deeply rooted in him. He's taking our roots deeper in this season. And we can't allow this quarantine to be for nothing. We have to allow the spirit to be in our shut and allow God to breathe upon you. Turn off Netflix for a little while. Turn off social media. Get off the phones and get into the spirit of God because the next thing that God wants you to do only the spirit can tell you. Only, it can only come from the ruah, the, the pneuma of God. It can only come from the breath of God, from a deep place, right from his divine diaphragm to give you the, the divine revelation about what he's about to do in this dispensation. God is doing a new thing. Behold, it cometh forth. It springs forth. He's breathing upon you. Be still long enough to feel the wind of God, to feel the breath of God in Jesus name. Hallelujah. The disciples were quarantined. They were in isolation because they were dealing with an external threat outside of the home, but nothing, the threat outside could not stop the spirit from getting in the inside. I need somebody to go ahead and put that in the comments right now. If you haven't shared this message, you need to share it right now that with the external threat, the threat on the outside couldn't stop the spirit from getting on the inside. The spirit of God, the spirit of Christ came into the room. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I'm believing in this time of, shot, of, of shutdowns and quarantines that Jesus is going to, hallelujah, is going to visit uh, his people. He's going to visit families. He's going to visit uh, f uh, students. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is going to allow you to cross over on the next the level. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're going to walk a different stage to all of the graduates of 2020. I want to encourage your hearts. You've been through 9-11. You have been through Katrina. You have seen so much devastation, mass shootings. You are a peculiar generation and the favor of God's upon you and God is breathing upon you. Hallelujah. Fresh wind, fresh fire, innovation, uh, inspiration for a new generation. God is breathing upon you so you can walk on the different stage. You're walking on God's stage. You're walking on a rhema stage, a right now stage. You might not have walk, be walking down the stage uh, for graduation, but let me tell you, God is allowing you to walk on this stage with fresh fire and fresh wind. There's something different in your hand. You was looking for to receive a diploma and to walk across the stage, but God needs you to carry something different for this next shift. God wants you, to, you, you got, you passed the class, you graduated, hallelujah, but there's another ordination, another ceremony that you were expecting, and it's, and it's, and it's in, it's going to happen in the shutdown. God has locked the world down just for you. Hallelujah. Because you're getting ready to spring forth. You're getting ready to come forth and bring forth new wine, bring forth a different paradigm, bring forth the a new, something out of the mind of God. Eyes have not uh, seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered to the heart of man what God has prepared for this generation, for this season of our life. But God does nothing. Amos, hallelujah, is decrees and declares that God does nothing 
nothing lest he reveals it to the prophets. And I'm here to tell you as a prophet of the Lord that God is setting you up for something amazing. There's a ceremony you've been predestined. This has been put in place before the foundations of the world because God had a different foundation for the stage you're supposed to walk across. You're bringing something different. You're bringing something new to save us out of this stuff, to make help us not to go back to the way church used to be. We can't go back after this, after this situation. No, after God has breathed on us, we'll never be the same. But this wasn't the last quarantine that, that the believers have been in. No, it was Acts chapter 1 where Jesus said, where Jesus, hmm, he sets up the shut-in. I feel the glory of God. He sets up the shut-in. He orchestrates it. He, 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 by his divine orchestration, he sets up an upper room. Hallelujah. <laughs> and at an appointed time, hmm, he's hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, I feel the glory. At an appointed time, the Lord said that the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is going to come upon you. He breathed it on them, but now it's going to rest on them and live in them. <laughs> ah, come on. Somebody says an, another dose of the Holy Ghost. You see, we've all been, we had our shut-ins. We have lent before. Come on. We've had our consecration times. We've had our times where we've been sanctified. Some of us fast for a job. Some of us fasted and prayed and consecrated ourselves because we wanted to hear from God. And 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 but this 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 one this this shut in is different. This shut in is different. In Acts is different from the one in John. This shut in is different. This shut in is where the the spirit is now going to live. In you, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, Acts chapter one verse eight, he says uh, that you're going to receive power. And when you receive this power, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be different. He said, you're going to receive this power, and you shall be my witnesses. You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to be a witness of the kingdom of God. You've been doing church, but now you're going to be a witness for the kingdom of God. You've been walking with me. You've been seeing me do miracles, signs, and wonders. But in this season, this thing is not, is not going to just be breathed on you. You're not just going to feel this. It's not going to just come and go. This thing is going to make its home with you. Make its home in you. That's what he's been decreed and declaring throughout the scriptures and through the, uh, through the halls and the corridors of the prophetic uh, word of God. He's been saying in the prophetic books, he's, he's been saying, I'm going to make my home with them. I'm going to make, I'm going to live in them. I'm going to reside in him. And you're going to bear my word and you're going to be my witness, but you're going to have Power, power is yours. You're going, and, and just as in Jesus, as it was declared by Peter in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, he says Jesus was anointed with, with the Holy Spirit and power. You see, you receive the Holy Spirit in John 20, but now you're receiving the Spirit and power. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Spirit of God, hallelujah, and power. You're going to have power. And with that power, you're going to have authority. Hallelujah. You got the inspiration and the revelation before, but now I'm going to give you the power to execute it. Many of you on this, on this Facebook Live, I can feel the glory. And many of you who are watching this replay, whatever platform you're watching this, many of you who are hearing me under the sound of my voice, you've had many times I received inspiration and you received revelation and you've received strategy, but not in, but you've been waiting for the power to execute it. You've been waiting for the time to manifest it. And this is the season. This is the time where the sons and daughters of God are going to rise up and they're going to manifest and decree and declare everything that God has for his people in the season. Everything that belongs to the nations, you're going to have the power to manifest it. You're going to have the power. Hallelujah. Can we go to a deep place? You're going to have the power as we have the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. To, we have the keys of the kingdom. 
kingdom. We have the keys to the kingdom. We have keys in the, to have dominion on the earth and, and, and open up portals and doors and windows. Hallelujah. That heaven can invade earth. That's why Jesus prayed the prayer that he prayed. He says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You have the authority and the power to execute everything that's on the, on the mind of God in this season. Everything that's in the mind of God for your family in this season. Everything that's on the mind of God for your business. Everything that's on the mind of God for your ministry. Everything that's in the mind of God concerning your hands and your feet. Everything that you're, God, you're going to manifest it in this season. God's going to speak it and your hands is going to bring it forth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we release the power of God to execute. We receive the power of God to be focused. Hallelujah. You had the spirit. You had inspiration and revelation. Hallelujah. The Lord, the Lord. He breathed upon you and you were stirred. But in this season, what you were stirred with is going to rest on you and you're going to be able to bring things forth. You're going to call you're going to speak those things that are not as though they were and 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 you're going to bring forth those things and they shall be in the name of Jesus I have power you need to decree that over your life I have the holy spirit and I have power hallelujah this shut in is 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 this preparing you to be able to show out Come on. God has you in a shut in so you'll be able to show out. Just because you're shut in does not mean that the spirit is kept out. No, this has been orchestrated by God to empower you on your for another level in the name of Jesus. I'm going up. I'm going up. While everything around me seems like it's going down, we are going up. Hallelujah. This, it, it, this, <laughs> I'm trying to impart this the best I can. It, it's something different when you see our heads bowed. It's something different when we go low. It's something different when the believer lays their head down. And when you see a believer cross, some people believe that the believer or the a person or individual is holding their head down or, or they are in a posture of defeat. But something changes when we clasp our hands and, and after we say amen, we, we raise up with power. My posture is not a posture of defeat. The shut-in is not because I'm fearful. This shut in in my posture is because God is doing something in me. He who began a good work shall bring it to completion. This this work that God is doing, he had to do it behind closed doors. I feel the glory. I'm trying not to wake everybody up, but I need somebody to wake up in the Holy Ghost and hear this. this is what God wanted to do in the season. He had to do it behind closed doors. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because my doors are closed, don't mean my life has stopped. God is working. God is breathing. God is re-energizing. God is pouring fresh wine. God is stirring his people up. He's, re he's rearranging some things. He's bringing people who's been in the background to the forefront. God is doing something in this quarantine. God is doing something in this shut in. And you're not just there just to be there. You are there just to watch Netflix and to watch everything. Um, watch all these updates and to continue to watch what's happening on the hilltops and, and on the Capitol Hill. No, I look to the hills. But I'm looking past it. And I know my help does not come from the hill, but it comes from the Gatabaya. It comes from the God. <laughs> Who made the hill? I, I look to the hills will come of my strength and know my strength coming from the Lord, my help coming from God. I'm looking at the hills to put my but my help coming from the Lord. I'm waiting for the hills to do something, but I know my help in this season, it gotta come from God. He get this shutdown, this shut in, and this this these this this work, the closed doors is because God is doing a work on the other side of the door. But when we come back, come on, we shall be new. 
We shall be new. We shall be made over. Hallelujah. Many people are going to be delivered and set free. There's some people who are going to recognize you but can't recognize you. There's going to be some people who see you but they get another introduction. I need everybody it right now. When this is all over, I'm going to have to reintroduce myself. I am saved. <laughs> Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. I'm coming forth with something greater than I had before the shutdown. I'm coming out with something more powerful than I, than I, than I had before the quarantine. I, mean, I, I am coming out with something greater in crisis. God is not a God of confusion. Hallelujah. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's right here and he's empowering my spirit. He's empowering my soul. And we got to make sure that we give room for the spirit in our shutdown. There's so much that comes when we give ourselves and yield ourselves to the spirit. Even in crisis, while their lives were on the line, while there's an external threat outside of the door, they were in agreement. They were together and they were waiting on the Lord. Wait. Again, I say wait upon the Lord. I know there's a lot going on. I know people blowing up your phone. I know you're getting emails and text messages. But I need you to shut it down and wait. I say wait upon the Lord. And sooner or later, not the sound in the government, not the sound from your family, the sound from your friends, but what? But the sound of the faithful spirit of God. There's going to be a sound of a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> this thing that's coming has a sound to it. And sometimes to be able to hear a new sound, you got to go to an old place called stillness, silence. Shut down, shut in, so you can hear this new sound. Because with the sound, there comes an agenda. With the sound, there's a persona, a personality, the spirit, a will comes with this shift. Not my will, but your will be done. I want to know what God wants to do. I need his power. I need power to hear. I need power to comprehend. I need the spirit. I need the spirit. Flesh and blood cannot understand this. I need the spirit of God. For these things are spiritually discerned. These things are spiritually understood. You got to be spiritually minded to understand what on earth is going on right now? You got to be tuned in to the Holy Ghost to get the Holy hookup in this crazy pandemic that we're in. God has not forgotten. God knows my name. But I need to know and remember his voice. I need to remember his spirit. Spirit of the living God fall fresh, fall fresh upon you. I know you're anointed, but there's a fresh anointing coming. I know you feel with the Holy Ghost, but there's a sound coming. I know that you're a prayer warrior, but there's other dimensions that he wants you to tap into. I know you had an assignment. But now he's given us new orders. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, that our lives are completely in your hand. Nothing is done without your knowledge or your permission. We thank you, God, for the setup of the shut-in so your spirit can come in, breathe upon us, rest upon us. And I, I thank you, live within us. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. I pray right now that, Father, you would touch your people. 
that they might get their house in order for a divine visitation. I pray that we'll posture ourselves to hear from your spirit, to receive from your spirit. I pray that we will arrange everything in the house in such a way that we can dream dreams again and see visions again. To hear the word of the Lord again. To feel the power and discern the power of God again. To be used the way you intended the church to be used. We've seen Jesus operate and he said greater work shall you do. Bring us back to your biblical intention. Thank you for delivering us from the man-made experience we have had. Huh. The church is on a comeback. Hmm. Yes. Fresh anointing. Fresh power. Innovation. Revelation. Miracles. Signs and wonders are coming. Revival is taking place, but not the way we expect it. We thank you, God. We all have a role in this. So spirit of the living God fall fresh upon us. Give us wisdom and revelation about the times, our roles, our placements in the name of Jesus. We ask you, God, to stir up that which needs to be alive in this season. And we ask you, God, to give us the grace to lay to rest that which has expired. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give us the grace to let go of that which is now a part of the old dispensation. And give us the grace to receive what you're doing right now. Give us boldness. Give us courage. Increase our faith in the name of Jesus. We come against a spirit of timidity, fear in the name of Jesus. We come against it now. We ask God for deliverance and healing. In the name of Jesus, so many generals, I can see it and feel it right now as we are praying, are hurt and broken. Heal their hearts, heal their minds, that they may return to the people with power. In the name of Jesus, not revenge, no bitterness, no malice, but come back with love, power, and a sound mind. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that those who've been wandering now in the shut in and stillness can be found. Yeah, may your people hear your voice and know it in the name of Jesus. And may they yield to your voice. Speak Holy Spirit to your people. The world is in crisis, but we are still in Christ. Yes, Holy Spirit. The world is in crisis, but we are still in Christ. Speak, Holy Spirit. We pray for power like never before. I pray, God, that your glory, your Shekinah glory, will just hover over our homes as your glory the cloud of glory was hovering over the tent when Moses came to speak to you and spoke to you and you spoke to him as a friend speaks to a friend. I pray that we will experience the visitation of your spirit and we will speak to you spirit to spirit, friend to friend in the name of Jesus. 
the answers we are looking for are in your presence. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We pray, God, that we will seek your spirit. Reintroduce to many the Holy Ghost. The way he is, not always the way we've heard him. He is real. <laughs> he is in our lives. He wants to dwell in us. He wants to work through us. He wants to change and transform our lives. He wants to change and transform people we come in contact with. The Holy Ghost. The same one that hovered over the oceans in Genesis lives within us. Hallelujah. He loves the water. You're 80% water. Hallelujah. His face was upon the waters. And you're 80% water. He desires to dwell on you, dwell in you, and has his face shine upon you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us know the most important person on the planet and his role in our lives, the Holy Ghost. As you shine upon this video and we see the rays of the sun, may we experience the rays of revelation of the Holy Spirit, the rays of of your glory, the rays of something new. I truly believe I could have gotten up and turned the blinds, but my spirit did not want me to move because somebody right now needs to know that with a visitation of the Holy Spirit, there's a new day. Weeping may endure for a night, but it's morning. Good morning. The Lord is here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Arise and shine and let your enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. May God continue to shine upon you. May his peace and his power dwell with you. In the name of Jesus. I just heard the Lord tell, tell, I just heard the Lord say, it's time for you to open the blinds and let me in. You've been depressed in this quarantine. You've been struggling in this shut-in. It is time to open your blinds. The spirit is in your shut-in. He's breathing upon you. He wants to rest his hand upon you you. Come on, let him in. Open the blinds. Open the blinds. New possibilities wants to shine forth. New opportunities are coming forth. God is giving you a manifestation of another chance. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Yes, Lord, I heard your Holy Ghost. He's removing the scales he is removing the blinds so you can see in the realm of the spirit. So you can see yourself different. He's removing the scales. He's removing the blind. The spirit is releasing you into greater vision, into greater clarity in the name of Jesus. Listen, I'm hearing him talk loud right now. Especially for those at East Friendship. Vision 2020. Can you see the sunshine right now? Come on, it's time to see who we are. We cannot get clarity of who we are and see who we are without the Holy Spirit. You need a visitation of the Holy Spirit. He had to shut it in. This work that he's doing on your eyes, your ears, your heart, hallelujah, your life, your future, it had to be behind closed doors. But because the doors are closed, the blinds got to be open. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let the sun come in. And I'm not talking about the S-U-N. I'm talking about the S-O-N. Let the sun come in. Let the spirit come in. In the name of Jesus. You've been broken hearted too long. Let him in. 
Let the Spirit of God do a work on your heart. Let Him do a work on how you perceive yourself. Hallelujah. He couldn't send you. Hallelujah. With you seeing yourself as an unfinished work, He wants to complete a work in you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to set you free. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit in. Reconciliation needs to take place. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all your people who are experiencing your spirit and they're experiencing forgiveness, reconciliation in this time. Thank you, God. God is at work. There's a spirit in this shut-in. The Holy Ghost is at work right in your house. You thought you had to go somewhere. No, he said all you had to do was come to me. Come unto me. All you who are weary and heavy laden. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on in. Let the Holy Ghost do a work in you. Yeah. I see somebody said a surgery. Come on, he's working. In the name of Jesus, he's making you lie down. You're too busy in ministry. You're too busy in life. He had to shut stuff down so he can give you what you've really been praying for. You've been praying for this thing too long. Hallelujah. You've been praying for something, but your actions have not positioned you to be able to receive every good and perfect gift coming from the Lord. And this this is a gift to get you to lie down, whether it's prostrate in before in his presence, whether it's laying down to rest for the Lord, giveth rest to his children. Come on. We 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 rise up and early and go to sleep late. That's all in vain. God gives us rest. Some of y'all needed a Sabbath. Some of you needed a shut-in. Hmm? Just to rest with yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me. Fall fresh upon your people. We thank you, God, that you're lifting through your spirit that is visiting us in our shut-in. You're lifting a spirit of depression, anxiety. We're coming against a spirit of anger. Huh? Anger. We come against suicidal thoughts. Yeah. And as your, sun, as your light comes forth, we rebuke the darkness in the name of Jesus. Dark thoughts. Hadebeshikiandobashiandobah. We come against it now in the name of Jesus. We come against loneliness right now. The fear of loneliness. We come against it now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, shine upon us in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm hearing even in the realm of the Spirit right now that many this. A few of you, not many of you, there's a few of you who feel like because you haven't heard from certain people, you feel like people, certain people have forgotten about you. They have not forgotten about you. This is just a time when you only need to hear from God. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear that. Hallelujah. Listen, it's real. It comes across our mind. We got to deal with certain things, but right now I'm hearing God clearly say, they have not forgotten about you. I just needed you more. You need me more. I need you more. Come on. I need more of you. Hallelujah. They have not forgotten. They're under my influence. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isolation brings forth revelation. And there's some things in this season only God can tell you. Only God can tell you. We've been relying on men and women of God too much. And this is a season where God gets all of you and he gets to tell you for himself. 
even in John, I believe it's the epistles of John, where he tells us that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. There's some things right now you got to get from the master himself. He's serving it up himself. There's a time where the waiter, the waiters and the waitresses help the chef. But there's certain visitations and certain encounters where the head chef not only cooks, but he serves it himself. There is a way that the head chef wants to deliver this. He wants the food to be presented in a certain way. He wants it to be put on the table at a certain time. And I'm here to tell you that your people, your leaders have not forgotten about you. God wants to serve you himself. <laughs> he wants to, and now, oh, and atabo, and only those who are intimate with God can receive what I'm about to say. I'm about to go crazy. Huh. Only those who are, have an intimate relationship with Christ can understand what I'm about to say. But God doesn't only want to cook it. <laughs> he not only wants to serve it, but he wants to feed you himself. <laughs> Woo! This is for lovers only. Hallelujah. He wants to feed you himself. Ooh, glory, hallelujah. Uh, mm. He wants to feed you himself. Mm. You, you have to have an intimacy with God to receive that right there. That's for lovers only. Ooh. He wants to feed you himself. He wants to look at you face to face. Feed you. Because while he's feeding you, he's talking to you. About the plans he has for you. He's talking to you about you. He has to feed you because in this season, we eating different. Come on, y'all. Quarantine, we're eating different. I'm not just talking about the natural. I'm talking about the spirit. We're eating different. You're not eating like you've been eating for the past few years. There's no assembly right now. There's no gatherings right now. You're getting a little Facebook here and there. But the main course is what you receive at home behind closed doors. I'm telling you. If you are only eating through social media, you are missing the main course. That must be my, my word to you. The Spirit comes to, hallelujah, feed us. Teach us. And what he feeds us energizes us because food has energy and electricity, the right food of God. <sighs> And he's feeding us and speaking to us. That intimacy that God's been wanting you to have. Because if we're honest, we will go here to preach and preach. Some of us might take notes, but that is the end of the encounter. Be honest. But now, you have in church and be in church at home. Christ been wanting, the Spirit been wanting to get to your house. But we, we done by the time the benediction. We're done by the time we hit the car. We're done by we hit the restaurant. Now, you can't eat and run. There's no intimacy in eating and running. He's changed your whole encounter. He wants to visit. He wants to sit. He said, I stand at the door and knock. Come on. Quarantine is not new to us. It's not new to God. He stands at the door and knock. Come on. Somebody get that scripture for me. He says, that if you let me in, I will sup with you. I will dine with you. Y'all think I'm just talking. I'm telling you, he's coming to feed you. He's coming to cook this thing for you. 
I love when I go to certain restaurants and they cook the, the meal for me right there in my face. They chopping it up. I love it. And they put the dish, the food on my dish right there. It's another connection with the, the chef. But the intimacy of God goes to a whole nother level and he feeds you. It's another level of love and care and interest. He's doing that in the season. So I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you got rid of the, the go bags. Hmm. You got rid of the eat on the go. You say, I want to sup with you. Yes, Lord, I want to sup with you. Thanks, D. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, yeah, spirit in your shut-in, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. <laughs> Woo! Woo the spirit in your shut-in. So as we have pray, prayed and we have imparted, I pray in the name of Jesus that you let Christ in. Let the spirit of Christ in. Let him breathe on you. Let him bestow his peace upon you. Let him bestow his power upon you. And now let him give you a portion. My daily bread. Give you a portion. A new meal is coming. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We pray that your word has fallen on good ground. And we pray that those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit saith to the church. We thank you. We thank you that our lives are still in your hand. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your power. And thank you for your portion that you're feeding us in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, God bless you. If you have not shared this, do me a favor. Share it. Come on. Go ahead. Share it. Somebody needs to receive this. I'm, I'm getting ready to download this and play this for myself. I, I play it over and over again. Share. Press that share button now so somebody knows that the Spirit of God is right up in their shutting. He's never leaving us nor forsake us. He does some work behind closed doors. And when we come out of this, we're going to be better than we were before we got in it. God bless you. May God continue to shine upon you. And may you receive from God. Hallelujah. I pray you are blessed. God bless you. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. All right. Peace and love from your family here in North Carolina. And on behalf of Pastor Melvin Maxwell and Sherry Maxwell, the angels of the house of East Friendship Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., to all the saints of God in quarantine, God bless you and let the Spirit in.